Gem International is a new diamond explorer in the richest diamond producing country in Africa. Located next to the fourth largest producing diamond mine in the world. International Spotlight is on an 1109 carat diamond recently discovered in Africa by a fellow Canadian junior. With a proven operator and finance team, Gem International trades on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol GI. Visit us at gemdiamondmining.com. You're listening to HowStreet.com Radio, available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. Welcome to HowStreet.com Radio, the online source for market opinions. Here is Jim Goddard. My guest is Ted Dixon, CEO and co-founder of InkResearch.ca, Canada's first online financial news and research service, providing insider news and knowledge to investors. Welcome back to the show, Ted. It's great to be back, Jim. The Canadian economy, is it doing better than many expected? Well, insiders in Canada are certainly betting that uh, we're about to see a, a surprise on the upside in the Canadian economy, and they are betting on the old economy. They're uh, placing their bets, uh, really when it co- what it comes down to is a uh, uh, pickup in we- Western Canada, the three, uh, three Western um uh, prairie provinces and uh, where uh, we're picking that up is uh, primarily uh, in our semi-annual rebalancing of the Inc. Canadian Insider Index which took place uh, on November 18th and there were some really interesting trends in there. Now just let me uh, give uh, your listeners just a quick uh, um, overview of the Inc. Canadian Insider Index. Uh, we launched that in 2014 but it does have uh, uh, history going all the way back to 2004 and uh, interestingly this uh, this index which is uh, 50 uh, um, stocks that insiders prefer in Canada uh, this uh, index uh, has had a, a, a pretty good track record against the TSX a composite in 2015 for example in a down year the index uh, outperformed the, the composite by over seven percent and this year it's uh, up on a total return basis year to date uh, just over 20% uh, here as, we, as we're as we end, ending the week, uh, uh, the first full week of December, and that's a little bit better than the TSX composite. So, uh, you know, the composite this year has been a, a, a difficult uh, uh, index to beat around the world. It's one of the, the best performing uh, developed market uh, uh, indexes around the world. So the uh, the index, uh, people can track it on CanadianInsider.com for free. It's, it's there in live time, so your listeners can check that out and follow that. And there's uh, a link to our index site, index.canadian, sorry, index.incresearch.com. It's right there on the Canadian Insider site. And then there's some charts you can play around with uh, to, to look at it. Okay. So with that background in mind, what are insiders telling us here on this rebalancing? Well, what happens on the rebalancing is uh, the stocks that, that don't meet the criteria uh, of our signals it's all rules based. Uh, they they get uh, thrown out, and new stocks come in. And what we've seen, what we saw uh, in November was a, uh, a, a, a a pairing back of exposure to gold and uh, some other defensive stocks, uh, such as food stocks. Uh, and uh, in came uh, a number of uh, natural gas related names uh, in came uh, a company that uh, that focuses on servicing the grain industry right in, in terms of the farmers and, and supplying them equipment and uh, we had uh, a, a company uh, come in that uh, uh, makes its money uh, primarily not only but uh, a lot of it by selling pickup trucks and if you're going to sell a lot of pickup trucks, Jim, in Canada, where do you think you're going to sell them? Probably where it's flat. Probably where it's flat and where they need them, right? I mean, sure, uh, there's, you, you see a lot of pickup trucks in Toronto and, and Vancouver, but, you know, uh, that uh, market uh, is fairly stable. If there's going to be a rebound in um, those kind of sales, it will like most likely be in Western Canada. So... Um, people can go to our website uh, and uh, the index site and, and click on the index presentation, and it's all uh, updated as of the December, and, and you can see the stocks uh, that are going in and the stocks that have left. But uh, 
uh, there, we've seen a real uh, move uh, by insiders towards uh, an economic, uh, a Canadian economic revival and its old economy. You know, we're not, uh, we don't have any uh, tech stocks in this in index. Uh, it's, uh, we have one healthcare stock, but the uh, in insiders are betting on just our old fashioned economy, energy and agriculture and uh, basically uh, consumer uh, cyclical goods such as uh, pickup trucks and uh, and what you'd need to to go out and enjoy yourself uh, in a in a bit better economy so things are looking up as we head into into the new year so you know there was a lot of gloom around the jobs report in Alberta i mean i, I just uh, all it seemed all day you know on on some networks all they could focus on was uh you know was uh, uh, unemployment in Alberta. Well, look, unemployment is a lagging indicator. Insiders, we like to think, as a leading indicator. That's why our index uh, does so well. So it's really an encouraging sign, but it's, you know, it's not going to come from um, the, you know, government infrastructure spending, ironically. It's not going to come from any magic formula that a government's going to throw our way. It's just going to come from what we've always done best. Why do you think there's been so much focus on possible government infrastructure spending? Because we haven't seen any yet. Well, that's right. It's been all talk and very little action. And and you know, in fairness to the federal government, it does take time to 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 execute on those projects. And in fact, as a taxpayer, I'm glad they're taking their time. You know, it's much better for them to do it properly, as, or as well or as well as they can than to rush into it and cut checks and, and build a bunch of things that we don't need. So the fact that they're, they're taking their time, I mean, I've always uh, supported the infrastructure uh, build only because the bond market, um, you know, if anything was so priced so low, and if, the bond, if, if bond investors are going to be silly enough to uh, lend money to the Canadian government, uh, you know, at nominal neg at negative real rates, you know, where the nominal rates are below the inflation rate, well, you know, why wouldn't, you invest now when basically bond investors are are in real terms paying the government to hold their cash. I mean, it's nuts, but uh, that's what the uh, the bond that's what bond investors have been doing uh, up until maybe very recently. We're starting to see some change with, with the Trump victory. So uh, hopefully, uh, Justin Trudeau and Bill Morneau are um, are uh, financing their infrastructure spending now and not waiting to issue those bonds. Uh, maybe you know a year or two from now. Hopefully, they're gonna they're gonna load up while the going's good. What should people be looking at then in the future? Is high tech dead, or something that you should be very careful about investing in? Well, look from a, you know from an investing perspective, what uh, what we've we've seen in this rebalancing is a tilt towards value a value stocks or stocks that are cheaper than the overall market. And uh, for you know for example the um, the uh, Canadian Insider Index it has uh, a, a much lower uh, Trailing PE ratio than even the um, the TSX composite is about 16.8 versus a TSX at uh, almost 20. Now, why would why would that be? Because once you start getting more growth in the economy, even if it's nominal growth, then you're not going to pay a premium to find those growth stocks like you had been during the Obama Yellen Bernanke years, where yeah, you know, sure the U.S. didn't go into a recession after t you know after the big financial crisis it pulled out and then it, you know then we had this kind of plodding growth but it was it was unexceptional growth and I you know I keep hearing all this stuff about the US job market how great it is well that's usually from you know people spinning for Obama you know the, the job market in the US was uh, is, is, a, is a second rate job recovery because a lot of the jobs are part-time and lousy you know and, and a lot of people uh, have to hold down two jobs but in any event it was a recovery but it wasn't a great recovery. So you you pay more for growth. You'd bid up the Amazon to astronomical PEs. But you know, stocks like that are now going to have to compete economy wide for growth. So people won't pay the same premium for them. You know, and it, and it's a real risk for marijuana stocks in Canada, um, where they've been one of the few uh, growth areas. And uh, those stocks could quickly come down to earth if we continue to see. Uh, signs of uh, economic uh, growth 
globally, uh, and we are seeing even in China, it seems like uh, they may have, at least for the time being, a bottom. In Canada, insiders are pointing to an economic revival. And in, Trump is uh, going to do what he can to try and jumpstart the U.S. economy. Of course, the jury is still out on that, but uh, uh, people like what they hear so far. Now, whether he's able to do it or not, you know, we'll check. We'll check back on the numbers uh, for sure as, in 2017. But if expectations are for better growth, then you're not going to go and scramble. Uh, you know, I, I haven't. I don't know exactly what the the the, the the P.E. ratio is on Amazon right now. I, I can pull it up, but it, why would you pay an astronomical rate for Amazon when you can get growth, uh, you know, in an index, uh, even, in, you know, in the TSX at 20 or the, or the Canadian Insider Index, at, you know, at 17. Uh, if you're going to get growth from, you know, companies in those index, and here, you know, Amazon's trading at a P.E. of 100 and and 71, according to Inc. Research uh, and Thomson Reuters data. So uh, why would you pay that if, if you're going to get growth uh, everywhere else? Now, Amazon's a great company. It, you know, it's a, sure, it dominates its space. It's dominating the cloud space. Um, it's a fantastic company. But it, it, now the case for paying 177 uh, PE multiple for that firm has become a lot weaker. So that's going to leave Amazon... Uh, and and others um, vulnerable. Now you know they, they could surprise. Amazon could continue to um, to um, you know dominate new fields and, and and continue to take market share away from competitors. And sure, it 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 could keep surprising. But the whole Fang, Facebook, uh, Amazon, uh, Netflix, Google, that whole complex of paying premium prices because these are growing companies, the rationale and the compelling reason for that is, it, you know, is just not there in a, in a global growth revival. You, you can get growth in other places. I've heard numbers that it could take you 300 years to get your investment back in places like Amazon. I well, mean, those are people who have been in it uh, you know, for the last five years uh, have had plenty of opportunity to get their money back. So you know, it depends how... Um, it depends what your holding period is and how um, uh, you know how active you're going to be. So, look, Amazon's a great company. It's just it's a very expensive company, and these and it's just you know same with the uh, uh, marijuana distributors in Canada. Look, you know, of course, this is a growth industry, but uh, are you going to? Do you really need to pay um, speculative? valuations uh, to participate in a growth industry when you can get it from old-fashioned mining industries, when you can probably get it in grain container uh, manufacturing companies, when you, you know, when all these old-fashioned businesses can can start delivering growth at very, you know, you know, multiples that are 10 times cheaper than some of these high flyers, uh, the compelling case for holding the high flyers is just going to be that much weaker. Now, look, if, if we have, uh, if the U.S. flip-flops and, and heads down south into recession, if, you know, we'll soon find out how strong this this uh, recovery is that uh, we've seen because interest rates have moved up in the U.S. and we will see if it chokes off the uh, U.S. Uh, economy. A lot of people expect that it will. But, the, you know, the jury is still out and in, our insiders in the U.S. are, are are not overly negative. Um, they're they're not hopping on the bandwagon uh, at this point as the uh, Dow Jones you know hits new highs. But I can tell you in Canada, insiders are fairly upbeat. Our insider sentiment has been rising as the market's rising. So those are all positive signs. Yes, are we going to get pullbacks? Likely. Uh, do you have to be prudent in you know in which stocks you pick? Absolutely. And you know, do you ha you ha do you have to have the risk tolerance for equities? Absolutely. You know, so investing in the stock market, especially near all-time highs, uh, is uh, is not for everyone. And uh, you know, and speaking of all-time highs, the Inc. Canadian Insider Index is trading at all-time highs. You know, as we close uh, the week out here, the first week of December. Now we'll see how it ends the year. But as we're speaking right now, it, it, it's over, you know, it's overtaken the 1166 level, uh, which was its previous all-time high in 2014. So it's hitting its all-time high actually before the TSX uh, composite. And we'll see if it can 
hold in there by the end of the year. But insiders have been fairly upbeat in Canada. Uh, sentiment has been rising as the market's rising. Now, you know, sometimes insiders can also be guilty of wishful thinking along with anyone else, but uh, as a group, they're usually pretty good. So, you know, heading into the new year, uh, I would say uh, signals are, are pretty good for the Canadian uh, economy and the Canadian market. You know, but we, of course, we could always uh, uh, be in for a surprise and, uh, you know, we would have to reassess as, as things move along. We'll have more with Ted Dixon right after the break. I'm Larry Ray, President and CEO of American Manganese Inc. Listed on the TSX Venture, ticker symbol AMY, A-M-Y, with proprietary patents in the U.S., China, and South Africa. Our focus is on recycling lithium-ion batteries for electric vehicles. China recently legislated the responsibility for recycling onto their electric vehicle manufacturers and importers. For more information, please visit AmericanManganeseInc.com or phone me, Larry Ray, at 7 Seven seven eight five seven four 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 four. Welcome back. We're speaking with Ted Dixon. Ted, you said Canada's old time economy is doing well. How are Canadian miners doing? The Canadian miners are the stock prices are anyway are on a, a bit of a, a tear, and they're now being led by the industrial miners, which is uh, healthy to see because that reflects the need for real input minerals and, and metals uh, that go into making things. So, you know, it, it's a positive to see, uh, you know, companies like Tech Resources uh, on the upswing. Um, you know, that's a member of the Canadian Cider Index as well. I mean, that's not a stock recommendation. It just is a fact that the stock has had a, a great run here this year. And uh, there are others as well. First Quantum is another uh, Vancouver-based uh, copper miner. It's, it, it's having a nice run. And it's being supported by strong metals prices. So the uh, the uh, the backdrop is good for certainly the senior miners, and you know we're starting to see some some financings come through on some of the more junior plays. It not you know it's not a flood, fortunately. I think uh, the market's being prudent, uh, you know, in terms of uh, who they're going to give money to, and that's very good. And certainly investors want to. Uh, focus on those companies with uh, uh, management and boards that have track records of delivering shareholder value as opposed to management value. And you know what I mean by that is, you know, to check uh, to see uh, you know who's running the firm and who's on the board and have they had success before in in, in making money for shareholders, not just. Uh, paying themselves big uh, management fees and consulting contracts. That's extremely important, particularly in the junior in the junior space. Yes, take a look. Are the people at the top traveling first class or business class to their meetings? Well, and just take a look at the salaries and the uh, and the consulting fees and who's getting the consulting fees if it's a related party or not. That's extremely important. And, you know, and I don't quibble with any uh, insider getting um, – a good paycheck and a good compensation if they've got a, 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 a established track record of adding value. Uh, but most of these insiders who have uh, good rack track records of adding value, uh, take, you know, take their compensation in stock because they want, you know, they want significant upside. And you don't get that from a paycheck or a consulting fee. You get it from the equity in your firm growing. So, you know, people can check that out on CanadianInsider.com for free. And, uh, you know, if they want to drill down more, of course, they could uh, consider a free trial in our subscription service. But, you know, Canadian Insider is a great starting point just to see uh, uh, who's buying. And, and, you know, if you're, if you're looking at a company, check to see if uh, the insiders have been buying or selling or, you know, what they're doing. So uh, it's it's a it's a good time for the Canadian market. It's not uh, you know uh, I think overly uh, overly bought here on a medium term. You know I think on any day you could see it overbought on a short term basis. Uh, you just have to be uh, prudent and uh, not to get carried away with uh, you know if you see a big a big uh, jump in, uh, in in share prices. There will be pullbacks and there will be uh, setbacks uh, to this market. There will be bad news that comes out that is a is an excuse for profit taking, and uh, you know you, you may see some uh, tax loss selling uh, come up in the next few weeks. But uh, you know the, the, with the with the uh, uh, Canadian market up 
uh, you know, almost 20 percent. There may be limited, uh, uh, there may be limited uh, examples of that. In fact, you may see a bit more weakness in January when if people uh, take their profits off the table in January and, and want to avoid the, you know, the tax man uh, for 2016. So, you know, there there will be uh, there will be uh, opportunities to participate. You, you just don't have to get carried away. You just have your shopping list ready and. Uh, and you know, and again, follow uh, obviously follow the, the fundamental trends uh, in terms of uh, you know, are we cons- are we starting to see signs that economic growth is coming through, and uh, are we going to have the Federal Reserve uh, raise rates at a moderate p- pace? And by the way, this is uh, terrible news for the Bank of Canada and their plan, their, their sort of their mercantilist approach to managing the economy. You know, by driving down the Canadian dollar to make our exports cheaper, uh, which also, of course, makes our real estate cheaper for for offshore people to buy and Americans to buy, uh, and more expensive for Canadians to buy. This is all bad news for their strategy, their mercantilist strategy. You know, and I say, you know, three cheers for that. Let's uh, let's uh, let uh, Canadians rebuild their uh, country uh, by going to work and uh, you know doing what they do best we don't need help from the bank of canada this you know and it's soon going to be apparent if this if this scenario plays out that we think is it, insiders are pointing to you know we're going to kiss these emergency interest rate levels goodbye pretty soon ted it's always a pleasure chatting with you Jim, if I'm not talking uh, to you and your uh, crew and your listeners before uh, the holidays, have have a have a great uh, Christmas, and uh, we'll speak to you if not uh, uh, before the new year, certainly in the new year. And have a, have a have a great holiday. Oh, I'll have the best. My holiday starts on the 16th. That's my birthday, so I have the nine days of Christmas. Thanks again, Ted. Thanks, Jim. My guest has been Ted Dixon, CEO and co-founder of IncResearch.ca. His website, CanadianInsider.com. You're listening to HowStreet.com Radio. If you have any questions, you can send them to info at HowStreet.com. I'm Jim Goddard. Comments made on HowStreet.com Radio are an expression of opinion only and should not be construed in any matter whatsoever as recommendations to buy or sell any financial instrument at any time. Available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. HowStreet.com Radio is a production of HowStreet Media Incorporated.